do a little update video here on my tower project. I have six cubic yards of 4,000 PSI cement with one inch aggregate. Added some retardant uh, to slow down the carrying process a little bit, which everything I read says it'll make it even stronger. So that's a 10 foot worth column of concrete, four by four. Four foot wide by four foot wide by 10 feet column. It's a six inch pile uh, above earth, nine and a half feet below grade. And uh, this foundation or the, the base for the tower, that's number 11 rebar. This stuff is huge. It's, I mean, that's, you can put it in my hand here, give you a little demonstration how big that is. And then this, uh, these plates, three eighths thick plates, some ATSM 325 steel, high strength steel. And uh, the uh, base is also the cage. It's all caged in there. So that part is done. I'm not gonna be using, I know everyone says, oh, you installed the, the base backwards. It won't tilt over. That's right, it won't. I didn't order the tilt over uh, option. I don't want the tilt over option. I can't make that work where I want. And this is a two story house. The ceiling is way up there. 24 foot exact, to be exact, 21 foot directly above where the tower sits here. Straight up there is 21 feet to the edge over there. It's 24 feet up there. That antenna is coming down by the way that uh, push-up mast with the 75 and 40 meter dipoles and 2 meter 440 diamond x 50 and 10 knots all coming down and uh, the tower which is sitting back here will be going up there so there's the Tashton DX70 crank up tower super heavy duty and the motor unit you see over there will be against the wall. And I'm doing that mostly for aesthetic reasons. So the motor unit will be right back here. And there's four inches of clearance between the uh, cover for the belt and the wall. And here I have the outlet for the motor unit, 20 amp circuit for the motor. And, uh, so we got the concrete poured today, finally, after nine months of dealing with GMED, Geomechanical Engineering Division, which is the Department of the Public, Department of Public uh, Works. They're the uh, geologists and they're a pain in the ass. So I got my, I wanna show you the grounds here. I just uh, ordered uh, stainless steel three quarter inch bolts. Since I'm not using the, the tilt over base, I don't need these bottom two bolt holes. So I'm gonna use this bolt hole here. I'm gonna change this out for a stainless steel bolt hole and yes, the paint is removed behind the stainless steel bracket. Penetrox is coating it between the steel and the stainless steel, which is the interface material to the copper, to the tinned solid number two copper wire, which leads back behind over here. That's a 10 foot, ignore this, it's my spark gap. That's a 10 foot, three quarter inch copper ground rod. That's a um, exothermic bonded uh, wire. That's one of the three ground rods. So that's for this leg. This leg, same thing, number two solid copper wire. And that runs down inside a piece of PVC all the way down to the bottom of the hole, which is 10 feet below this. There's a 10 foot, three quarter inch ground rod buried in the ground at the bottom of this hole. Uh, but it's not through the cement. I didn't want it through the cement. Uh, that is my second ground rod. The third is this 10 foot, three quarter inch ground rod, which I have connected to this three and a half inch copper strap. Um, obviously this one's been out in the weather a little bit longer. This one's new. And uh, this is for a good RF low impedance ground. The other two more lightning and static. This one's for RF and uh, RF ground. Now, inside this box. So the tower is grounded in three points, solid copper strap, 
three and a half inch strap to this ground rod. This ground rod up here is bonded to this plate. Inside here we have our Morgan surge suppressors and uh, dissipation units and LMR 600 coax all in connectors, um, times microwave connectors and, and uh, um, this will be for the step by RTV 36. This will be for the two meter 440 uh, Diamond X 300 on top. That's all the antennas I'm gonna have. Then I'll be uh, LMR 600 Ultraflex out looping around and then up the tower. And then here, this is for the rotor control, um, for pin rotor control. It'll either be an Orion 2800 or the M squared 2800 or possibly the new DX Engineering RT 4500RT if they ever release it. I need it now. I could use it now because I hopefully will have the tower vertical here in, in a couple of weeks. So, and then these are surge suppressors for the uh, Step IRDB 36. And that's it. That's all I'm going to do. I don't need 15 feed lines and a bunch of coaxes and, and switches and everything. Just two. One for HF, one for VHF, UHF. That's it. So, oh, another feature. This number four solid here bonds to some more ground rods between the, this, this coax is, is trunk through a conduit underground to my radio room. Um, and uh, there's ground rods about every 10 feet, uh, eight foot, uh, three eighths ground rods about every um, uh, 10 feet or so. And they're all bonded together. And also this bonds to over there is my electrical uh, utility panel. On the other side inside, there's a U for ground, which is a steel rod into the foundation of the house tied to all the steel in the house. And that's U for ground and it's, it's bonded there too. And that's done for electrical code, but it's nice that everything's gonna be at the same potential. The tower, the well, the grounding here, the radio room, everything is all bonded together. Um, and every every step point there's not more than about 10 feet distance between any ground rod and every ground connection ground rod to the to the uh, uh, Ground bus is all exothermically bonded um, And save for this one right here because I don't know how to exothermic bond strap haven't figured that out yet But that's okay so There we go. There's the update so concrete pour today matter of fact I need to uh, spray it down so it's getting a little dry. So I missed it down here a little bit. Try to get it to cure as slow as possible. It was in the shade all day, but now the sun's getting to it here. So I want to keep it from drying too quickly. So it cures nice and strong and doesn't crack. So there we go. So I'll come out here about an hour and do that again. And uh, there you go, there's the update. So hopefully in a couple of weeks, I'll have a tower vertical here. Yay.